Good day and welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we will be starting a series on natural gas fractionation using the um, tubo expander mechanism, right? Yes, so natural gas fractionation using the tubo expander mechanism. Now, our simulation in this series will be based on that, right? So it will consist of a series of videos, video tutorials. Now, the tubo expander mechanism is a, a mechanism where you have a gas passed or sent through an expander right now that um, passage of the gas or that fluid right a fluid the passage of that fluid through the expander right generates energy that can be used to drive a compressor right so that's um, the the um, fluid is passed through an expander and that process leads to the generation of energy right and that energy can be used to drive or provide energy for the compressor for a compressor right so that's how it works or that is the summary of how the tubo expander mechanism works and then you have a brief um, illustration of it on the screen at the moment right so the gas is sent through is usually a gas right it's sent through the um, expander and energy is generated and the energy generated from the expander can be used to can be used in a compressor right so our simulation will be based on this particular principle right so but the aim of this tutorial is natural gas fractionation, but it will be based on this particular mechanism, right? So we have our simulation data, right? We have our simulation data. So the first step is to specify your components in the component list and then your property package as well, right? This is a hydrocarbon process so it doesn't need too much specifications in the simulation base basis manager all you need to do is highlight your components lists click on add then in your component list add the um, required components right so these are the components involved in the process from nitrogen to n hexane right and this is their composition then we are using Ben Robinson as the property package right so all that has already been chosen right so the first step is to choose your components and then choose your fluid package right so once you are done with that, we can go into the simulation environment, right? So in the simulation environment, the first thing we'll specify is our feed, our feed stream, right? Of which we have the feed properties here. The feed property is here on the screen. So we specify that the ngl feed let me see so we are changing the name to feed right enter then the properties we have 5000 kpa pressure then temperature is 25 degrees celsius then molar flow is 2998 right molar flow is 2998 
enter then we have the composition composition let's see One point four nine E two that should be minus two, right? Yes, so you click enter. Okay, so this our this is the most fraction of all the components in our feed. Right, so you can enter their values, and once you are done, you click on OK, and then the feed is fully specified. The feed is fully specified. We have specified the conditions, the temperature, pressure, molar flow, and then the composition. Right, so now this feed is sent, is sent through a an lng heat exchanger right it's actually central and lng heat exchanger before the um before the expansion takes place right the expansion takes place it's sent through an lng heat exchanger and then also there is a separation a little separation using a two-phase separator before the expansion takes place so we'll be simulating all of that right so first we need an lng exchanger now you can find that where can you find that okay it's on the let me see if it's in heat okay yeah it's in heat transfer you can find that in the model palette heat transfer section of your model palette you just click on heat transfer and then your lng exchanger is there right so you bring it into the simulation environment and then you can start making prior specifications right so this feed is passed through the lng exchanger then it goes through a cooler then a separator before it gets to the expander right so we'll be simulating all that so for the lng exchanger we have our specifications here we have our specifications here yes this is it so we have we have three um streams three inlet and three outlet streams right for the lng exchanger and these are the specifications right so these are the specifications we'll be making to our lng exchanger right the difference between the lng exchanger and the normal exchangers is that the major difference is that it can have more streams than the regular heat exchangers right the, the regular heat exchangers have two inlets and two outlets right but this lng exchanger can have multiple right more than two inlet and outlets right so we'll be specifying this though we may not specify it entirely but we'll be specifying it so from our from our specification we have three sides so we'll add one more side because there are just two there and then from the specification also we have two cold sides and one hot side right the hot side is our feed right our feed is the hot side from here while the other two streams passing through the exchanger are cold sides right so we will specify that first okay so the stream the first one can be our feed right then yeah it's hot but this one will be changed to cold because of our problem statement 
so cold cold hot then we can now create streams for these other two sides from inside the lng exchanger so the inlet is 2 and 3 while the outlet is 2a and 3a then the feed outlet is feed a right so we can make those um, changes here so we just do that then this is 2a that is the outlet then 3a then this is 2 and this is 3 this is 3 so we have specified our inlet and outlet streams the message bar says unknown delta p and the delta p is all given right here for each of the um, stream passages you have a pressure drop of 20 kilopascal right so we just specify that 20 for each of them yeah hot supposed to be hot 20 for each of them and 20 for this as well right now what else do we have to specify there we have some um some specs for the L, uh, lng exchanger right we have some specs we can specify for it the minimum approach and then the change in temperature delta t right so we can specify that before we continue with the simulation right so just like your regular heat exchanger you can also specify your specs for your lng exchanger right so we go to specs right here in the design section you have specs you click on it and then you can edit your existing specs and then you can add more specs as well right so you click on add you click on add twice because we want to add two specifications so we open this one and this is delta t right yes delta t and delta t has the outlet temperatures yes the temperature of the outlet streams that is 2a and 3a from here delta t has 2a and 3a to be zero degrees celsius so that is what we'll be specifying in that particular spec which is this so the first is 2a and the second is 3a right you specify both of them together we can change the name of this to delta t so that it appears in the form right so for this particular spec we are going to specify both 2a and 3a in the same um, form right so the spec value is zero degrees celsius right so this is fully specified you can exit it then for the um for the minimum approach we can change this as well yeah you can change this then we change this to minimum approach right we change the type to minimum approach then the pass is overall the pass is overall from here so we change that the pass is overall then the spec value is the spec value for minimum approach is 10 degrees celsius so we input that as well right 10 degrees celsius so we are good with our specifications for the lng exchanger so we can exit this form right
then we can arrange this a little right we can arrange this let me see we can arrange this a little um horizontal right so this this will not um they will not solve for now until we specify some other downstream equipment right so it's when we specify the downstream equipment that these other streams in this lng exchanger will solve right so this LNG exchanger is used for heat exchange for um, LNG feed or LNG streams, right? You can use it for LNG streams when you want to exchange heat, right? So we will be specifying other equipment and then as we are going on, the simulation will continue to solve, right? So the these streams are dependent on some other downstream equipment right so we have to specify those ones first before they can solve so after this lng specification the next thing is to we need to specify a cooler right we need to specify a cooler that will cool this um feed stream to a certain temperature the stream outlet actually the feed stream outlet to a certain desired temperature before it sends to a two-phase separator where the um, liquid that may be present in the gas is separated from the gas before the gas is now sent into the tubo expander right so we need a cooler and we have the cooler specifications in the problem statement right the cooler specifications so for the first cooler right which is the cooler for the feed you have outlet temperature of minus 62 degrees celsius and then pressure drop of 20 kpa so that is what we'll be specifying next so we have cooler I'll just name this QC QC then inlet is feed A outlet is um let me just say cooler out now delta p is 20 you can specify your delta p from parameters right then the cooler temperature the outlet temperature is minus 62 right so this outlet stream are solved but this stream will solve eventually as we go on with the simulation right let me just confirm yes minus 62 degrees celsius right so this also has solved okay delete this stream i don't need it yes now the um the cooler has not yet solved because the feed to the cooler is not fully specified yet so it will get specified when we continue as we continue with the simulation right so now this cooler outlet is sent to a separator where the any residual liquid in it is separated from the gas before the gas is sent to the expander right so we need a two phase separator so we get a two phase separator from our pallet right and then use it um let me see i may need to do this for the space of for the sake of space i need to 
maximize this flow sheet environment to hide yes so that i can get more space from here then i can reduce this a little so we are good now so we need um let me see we need outlet streams for the two-phase separator just to specify the outlet streams connect the inlet streams and the two-phase separator has or will be fully specified so the inlet is cooler out right and then we have our outlet streams our vapor and liquid outlet streams so this is fully specified then the next thing now is to send this vapor outlet to the um, expander right the expander is where the energy required for the compression to take place is generated right so that is why we send this guy to the expander now where the fractionation comes in is that after the um, vapor has passed through the expander that vapor is then sent into the a distillation column right where the fractionation the ngl fractionation takes place before it is now sent into the compressor right so that it can be compressed the separated gas which is mostly methane can be compressed right now that compressor derives its energy from the expander that's how this particular technique works right so the next is to feed this vapor outlet to the expander so for our expander let's see um okay our expander the only specification we have is the outlet pressure right so we go back to our model the outlet pressure you can get your expander from your pallet right you have the compressor and then the expander you can also click on pressure changer to find your expander right so this is the expander we are going to be using it here right the inlet is um the inlet is this then this will be qe then product is let me use this then we are specifying our outlet pressure which is 2800 kpa 2800 kpa right so the expander has solved the expander has solved right so the energy of the expander is what will be used to drive the compressor now before we feed to the um, distillation column i would need to input another separator that separates that further separates this outlet the um, outlet stream of the expander that further separates it into vapor and liquid right before sending to the distillation column now the um the technique of the expander is to reduce the pressure of the feed right so the feed is at a pressure of um for 4960 kpa right then your outlet is at 2800 kpa right so that's the technique of the expander it reduces the pressure of a gas right and then most likely increases the volume so when the pressure reduces the volume increases right 
so now we need another two phase separator here then we would have outlet streams for it as well the feed to the two phase separator is the outlet of the expander right the outlet of the expander so you have you have this and then uh, sorry this is a mistake supposed to be let me see okay so you should have this instead right and then this one so this has been solved as well right two phase separators are very easy to model especially when you are not modeling them rigorously now um for this uh, first um separator i want a valve to i want to add a valve to the um, liquid product right both the liquid product of the first separator and the liquid product of the second separator will be sent into the distillation column for fractionation right so in the fractionation column the gas or the vapor will be separated from the liquid right then that is what will now be sent into the compressor right so the liquid of this first separator and the liquid outlet of this second separator will be sent into a fractionation column right now for the um, valve we have the valve specifications here okay so just the change in pressure which is 2165 kilopascal 2165 so we specify an outlet for the valve and then you have the inlet to be the first liquid product we have which is this then the parameters we can specify um, delta p there which is 2165 2165 right so that's it this um this portion of the simulation has been specified yeah 2165 2165 so that's it so the next thing is to send the liquid products to the fractionation column now we'll treat that in a separate video right right so we'll end this particular lecture here right so in this lecture i try to introduce you to the um tubo expander mechanism right the tubo expander mechanism and also to introduce you to the use of the lng exchanger for heat exchange in um lng right so that's what we took or did in this particular tutorial right so in the next um, video i would attach the um distillation column the fractionation column where the gases will be separated from the liquid and then that will now be sent into the compressor right which is going to derive its energy from this particular expander right we can even change the name of this expander to a turbo expander right we can change the name right so we can leave it like this so this is this would generate the energy required for that particular compressor right so in the next video we'll be treating the distillation column of this particular process right if you have questions on this on what was taught in this tutorial kindly use the comment section right like this video share with your friends then subscribe to this channel for more tutorials on process simulation thank you for joining me do have a good day